Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to take on some problems involved in uh, indirect proofs. All right, we have two problems. Uh, the first one is just a single question, and then the second problem has several parts to it. So let's talk about the first problem, number 14 from our book. So the question is, prove that if no two medians of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is scaling. So remember, in an indirect proof, we're going to take the assumption uh, that what we're trying to prove is not true. We're going to use the givens that are provided to us. And then we're going to show by contradiction that our assumption uh, about the proof statement not being true uh, cannot possibly be because of a contradiction in what's given. So with that mouthful, Let's talk about number 14. So again, prove that if no two medians of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is scalene. So here I have uh, a triangle, and I have drawn two medians, C, D, and A, E. In this case, now I mark up the diagram, A, D is congruent to uh, D, B, and I have uh, B, E congruent to E, C. Now, I've shown that A, D, D, B, B, E, and E, C are congruent, because I'm going to assume now, and we'll go through this more uh, formally in the next slide. I'm going to assume that, as part of the indirect proof, that AB is congruent to BC, so that I have an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to assume that I don't have a scaling triangle, I have an isosceles triangle. In that case, I know that angle BAC is congruent to BCA. And if the angles are congruent, the sides opposite them are congruent. So I know then that AB is congruent AB is congruent to BC. Okay, so I'm going to assume we have an isosceles triangle. Right, and by definition, AD and BC are congruent. I have two medians, so uh, a if AB and BC are congruent, then AD and DB, BE and EC are congruent, because if two segments are congruent, they're like divisions are congruent. Okay, if that's the case, then I know DB and BE are congruent, uh, and I know that angle B is congruent to itself, and I also know that AB and BC are congruent. So I have two triangles that are congruent by side angle side. I have BDC, and I have BEA. So these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. If that's the case, then I know that AE is congruent to DC, but AE and DC are the medians. So if I have an isosceles triangle, or a triangle in which I have at least two sides congruent, then that means that there are going to be medians that are going to be congruent as well. So therefore, if a triangle has uh, medians that are congruent, it has to be a scalene triangle. All right, so going through it more formally, the proof, assume that the triangle is isosceles. If the triangle is isosceles, then BA is congruent to BC by definition of isosceles triangle. DB is congruent to BE because if segments are congruent, then they're like divisions are congruent. And angle A, angle B is congruent to itself. Therefore, triangle BDC is congruent to triangle BEA by side angle side. And by CPCTC, two medians DC and EA are congruent. Therefore, in a scaling triangle, no two medians can be congruent. Otherwise, it would be isosceles. All right, we're going to move on to the next problem. And again, I mentioned that there are several parts to this problem, but they all reflect back on um, this particular trapezoid that's drawn and given. Okay, show that the diagonals of C, S, and O, I, segments C, S, and O, I, of the given isosceles trapezoid do not bisect each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw CS, the uh, diagonals for CS and OI. <coughs> and I draw my first diagonal here, and my second diagonal here. Now I want to find out that um, what the midpoints are of CS and OI. Because if they bisect each other, then the midpoints are going to be the same. So I do the calculations for the median of CS, and I find out that the midpoint is 1, 4. And then I do the calculations for the median of OI, and I find out that the median of OI is negative 1, 4. So in fact, the diagonals do not bisect each other because the medians of the two diagonals are different. In the second question, <coughs> uh, it's asked, 
are the diagonals of this isosceles trapezoid perpendicular? So we want to find out again. So we draw C, S, and we draw I, O. And we want to find out if these two diagonals are per perpendicular. And if they are perpendicular, then we know that the slopes of those two lines are going to be opposite reciprocals of each other. So I find the slope of CS, and I find that to be negative 1. And then I find the slope of IO, and I find that to be 1. So yes, in fact, the diagonals of this isosceles trapezoid are perpendicular, because the slopes of the diagonals are opposite reciprocals. OK, moving on to part C. Do you think that the diagonals of every isosceles trapezoid are perpendicular? So what we're going to do here is we're going to experiment. We're going to move I, uh, point I, to negative 6, 0, and S to 6, 0. So we keep our isosceles trapezoid, because the distances from C to I and O to S remain the same. And now we're going to, again, draw our two diagonals from C to S and from I to O, but with the changed coordinates. So I change I, in this case, to negative 6, 0 and I change s to positive 6, 0. So let's just change that on the bottom. So I have i at negative 6, 0, and s at 6, 0. So I retain my isosceles trapezoid, and now I'm going to find the slopes of cs with the new coordinates, and oi with the new coordinates, and I find that the slope of cs is 8, negative 8 ninths, and I find the slope of oi is 8 ninths. So the slopes are opposites of each other, which mean they have the opposite sign, but they're not reciprocals of each other. So, so then the answer to this question is no. Not every uh, isosceles trapezoid has diagonals that are perpendicular to each other. OK, moving on to the fourth and I believe last question. The, set, the question says, can you figure out what to draw so that you could use the formula a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared to find that OS is equal to 8.25? So we remember that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. is just the Pythagorean theorem. And so a Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles. So we draw uh, a line from O to B that's perpendicular to IS to create that right triangle. So I have my right triangle OBS. And I know my coordinates of B are going to be 3, 0. Because the line is perpendicular to IS, I retain my Y coordinates. And then I keep the X coordinate, I'm sorry, I retain my <coughs> uh, X coordinate. And I keep the Y coordinate of S. So my point here is going to be 3, 0. Now I have the lengths of BS and OB, I can find out what OS is. So I know that OB is going to be a distance of 8, and I know 8 units, and I know that BS is going to be the distance of 2 units. So I can use, I can substitute those values in for OB and BS to find out what OS is. So I have 8 squared, OB squared plus BS squared, which is A squared plus B squared, is equal to OS squared, which ends up being C squared. I know that OB is equal to 8 units, BS is equal to 2 units. So I have 8 squared plus 2 squared is equal to OS squared, or 68 is equal to OS squared. If I take the square root of 68, I end up with 8.25.